What are you seeing right now in the world of texting? Because this is something that comes up a lot on the show where people think there's, you know, they're saying there's a lot of opportunity in this channel, a lot of untapped opportunity. And now brands everywhere are looking into this more. What are you seeing in the space right now? Like how are companies using this and what are maybe best practices or opportunities? You know, the stats are kind of amazing because on the one hand, more brands are starting to want to do it. You know, when we, when we started selling this in 2017, no one was doing it and it was very hard to get brands to try it out. Now it seems like a lot of brands in e-com and, and retail want to do it. But even that being the case, when we look at our hundreds of millions of SMS subscribers across our customers today, still today, about half of them, half those people, 50% around there are only signed up to one SMS program. And another like 30 something percent, maybe more than that, are signed up to two programs. So while the channel is something that people are beginning to embrace, it is not saturated, right? So that means that the average consumer here is still getting, let's say the average brand is sending one or two messages, maybe two messages a week. Person suddenly signed up to maybe one and a half, two programs. That means that on a weekly basis, they're still only getting a couple messages on SMS. Whereas if we went to something like email, the average person I think is getting like 150, 200 emails every day, thousands in a weekly basis, as compared to like three or four for SMS. So I, I think that SMS is, is very, very, very far from saturation today. Yeah. What do you, like, how do you guide your clients on creating good text strategies? Because I, and I'm sure you've had this too, you get some texts from a brand and you're like, no, like just no on everything you're sending me. I don't want to get spammed for a 5% discount over and over or that you're offering me something that I never cared about versus the other ones. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Now I want to follow that link and actually buy that. And so how do you advise brands to think about this as a strategy? Yeah, when we started doing it, you know, we looked at some of the brands that were doing it because it was, it was a small percent, like 4% or something at top of thousand retail. We're, we're sure companies doing it, but as you alluded to, a lot of the programs were just the same message every week or two, right? And it was like, don't send the same thing over and over and over again. It is very different from email, right? I think the biggest mistake people make is they take what they're doing in email and they just move it to text. It's so different because in email, you're only going to have 10, 15, maybe 20% of people even opening it. In terms of the actual content, click-through rates could be like 1%. So you can be repetitive in email because a lot of people aren't going to see it. In SMS, they saw it. So you don't have to have that same concern, but it also means that you have to be creative around the type of messaging you send. Keep it fresh, keep it relevant. Sure, it's a reminder to shop, but you also want it something that, that delights the end consumer. So there are certain types of messages that you mentioned where it's repetitive. Have you said this type of thing before that will get the highest opt-out rates? When you do want to keep a close eye on those, those opt-out rates, make sure that you're not sending repetitive content and personalize the message. You know, we can do segmentation we can do custom content in the message in order to personalize it, that sort of thing in order to make sure that it's, it's, it's personal. We kind of divide the world up today into messages that, Hey, I'm going to go send a message to my list versus messages that are automated. I think the automated messages based on, Hey, something's back in stock that was out of stock that you're interested in, something's price changed. Those type of things are always going to be much more interesting to the consumer. What's the most innovative strategy that you've seen within the past month or two where you're like, oh, that's pretty unique. No one's doing that. Is there anything that comes to mind? We had a, um, a big product release we did a couple of weeks ago called Attentive Concierge. And this is something that I think we need to continue working to educate the consumer on, but is a really awesome, interesting experience. So the big idea is that when you walk into a store, there's almost always someone there to help you. Someone there to guide you, answer a question. Hey, can I help you? Yeah, that comes in this size. Let me get you the right thing. Follow up with you, whatever, right? We don't have that really online. And I think being able to have that type of concierge service online to answer questions, be available, et cetera, customer service, all via text is a pretty magical experience. That's really what we're trying to do with our attended concierge product. A lot of it is people powered. So a lot of it is still people behind the scenes doing it. It's not just some bot, which means we can actually deliver a great experience to the consumer. So I think that's probably the newest, coolest thing that we've launched and are seeing pretty fantastic results on. Hey, thanks for watching. This segment was made possible by our friends at Salesforce Commerce Cloud. If you're looking for the number one platform for all your commerce needs, go check out salesforce.com slash commerce. And don't forget to subscribe below and tap that little bell icon so you can stay on top of all the amazing new segments and full episodes that we'll be putting out over the coming year with some of the best and most influential commerce leaders out there.